freshman. We're here with Cam Thomas out of LSU, uh, one of the best scorers in the country, best scorers in the draft. Cam, we appreciate you taking the time, man. Appreciate you having me. All right, well, I want to break down your film here with you and kind of look at, you know, all the different ways that, that you score the ball. Clearly, Definitely. you know, that's, I think, what you can bring right away along with some other things. So we're going to do a little segment called Five on Five. All right. And so it's five different kind of areas where you've been really, really strong, you know, this freshman season. Mm -hmm. And then also five areas where maybe you've been working on and improving and want to ask you kind of what you see on different possessions and kind of get inside your, your mind a little bit and mm -hmm. how you see the game. So um, I think initially, like, your ability to, to shoot it off the dribble is a huge part of your game, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's, what, 21 on the shot clock, mm -hmm. right? But what, <laughs> what allows you to feel so confident here to just, like, you see a switch and, and pull from that deep? Yeah, just, you know, like, just my confidence, really, and really just our system. We'll uh -huh. wait, you know, Coach will wait, really let us go and let us play our game freely. So, you know, and plus we was down eight, so I felt like we need we needed a little spark. So, and I felt really good about that shot, and you see, pull up three. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of guys in, in this draft, even the world, really, who, who can make pull up threes from that deep. You've always had that range? Yeah, always had that range. I always been able to shoot off the dribble that far, catch and shoot that far. I always had some range on me, even back when I was younger. So, you know, that's still the same old. Yeah, huge, huge part of the the intrigue with you. And then, okay, what what are you reading here in his feet, his defense that allows you to go to the step back? Yeah, because in, in this game they were switching everything. They were switching everything a lot this game. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was just driving to the basket and you know getting to the mid range this game a lot. So he was playing me to go mid range. So, you know, he, he he left it open for me, so I just, you know, easy step back three for me, which is my go-to move, really, so. Yeah. He really just left the step back three open. So he's giving you a little bit of space, mm -hmm. um, and then you just create it there perfectly, and then kind of rise and fire. You got great elevation on your shot. Yeah. And then you have different ways to get kind of that step back move, too. Mm -hmm. um, you see this in the league a lot. Where'd you get this? Yo, just me, just me and just reading his feet. You know, I've always been able to do the step back between the legs. No, no, no move, just step back. So, you know, I'm just reading his feet. He was really playing me to drive, trying to send uh -huh. me the help. So, you know, and uh, guard on the big, that's easy. Yeah, and he's kind of, you look at him now, he, he looks, yeah, he wants no part of this. Yeah, he's a sitting duck. So he just, <laughs> sitting duck? Yeah, I like he's that. A sitting duck, so, you know, easy. And then you mentioned kind of the mid post, too. I mean, this is a move you see from a lot of NBA guys. Uh, take yeah, me yeah. through this one. Yeah, this right here, he was pretty, you know, this is DJ Stewart. He was pretty, like, and see the whole game so, okay. I knew, so I knew I could get him with some moves and you know right here he was really like playing me to go middle but I wanted to fake him out so I can get an open J so I really just knew the spin move would get him you know and honestly I just made that move up in my head yeah. on this when I had the ball in my hand I was like I'm gonna just do a spin move and, hey. he, went for, and he went for the spin move so I just turned back around so I really just made it up in my head so he bit on that pretty hard yeah uh, you're pretty comfortable on these the, like mid post huh yeah, you know, watching a lot of Kobe, watching his uh -huh. moves in the mid post. So I really, I'm very comfortable in the mid post just from watching Kobe. All right, that's you kind of shooting off the dribble with range, right? Mm -hmm. And then now they got to guard you, right? So you yeah. can get to the rim? Yeah. So what do you right see here? here? So right here, uh, transition, a little change of pace. I knew I knew they was kind of playing me for a jump shot, and I just wanted to lower him to sleep. And I just kind of like lowered him to sleep right here and just drove past him for the, for the layup. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of that is like because you're a threat from here, right? They got to worry about you. Mm -hmm. um, and then take me through this finish here. Yeah, so I really just wanted to get into his body mm -hmm. and like cut off his path. And, you know, as soon as I cut off his path, he cut off his path, he's kind of at my mercy. So, you know, easy finish right here. Yeah, same foot, same hand, a um, little bit of deception, right? Yeah, a little bit of deception, quick finish. Yeah. All right, that's your ability to kind of create off the dribble for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, you know, it's finding that balance between, all right, getting your own and, and creating for others, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you see here on this possession? And anyone, anything you would have done to take this back? Or any reads you see? Let's yeah, see. I probably would have, right here, I probably would have kicked it out to Andre. And mm -hmm. he would have won the more theories days. But, you know, this game um, was kind of a slow start, so I was trying to get myself going a little bit. But right here, I would have kicked it to Andre High and one more did the Darius days, and it would have been a three. So you can kick to Andre in the corner? Yeah, I'll kick to Darius. And then a one more to Darius. One more to Darius. Yep, or even a kick to Darius too, right? Yeah, either or, you know. But I know that's an area you kill. Um, you, you generated a lot of free throws, you know, yeah. this past year too. Um, What's the key to that, getting in the line so much? Uh, you just want to get a rhythm. Yeah. You, know, you want to get as much easy points as possible from the, 
from the free throw line, and you know you see it from a lot of guys that I watch, James Harden, Devin Booker, they get to the line. So yep. if you want to get to the line and get your rhythm, establish yourself early on in the game. So see the ball go in the hoop. Yeah, see the ball go in the hoop. And you have a nice rhythm throughout the game. Yeah, no question. And so all right, there's that clip right where you know uh, just kind of you, your world. Whereas this, I love this. Like early hit ahead, right? And then the ball finds energy. So Trent is gonna get back to you. You're gonna get downhill. See the help. Mm -hmm. One-handed pass. I mean, that's like that's how a lot of NBA teams want to play, right? Yeah. Take take me through this possession from the beginning. Yeah, um, I'm pretty much at my best when it's like full speed like this in transition because they're pretty much at my mercy. I need to pull up, get to mm -hmm. the hoop, but I can hit the trend then. And Tennessee was really playing me to be a passer this game a little bit, so they were just leaving this Andre Hyde wide open in the corner. So I did a nice corner pass to him, and he knocked it down. So how do you find that balance between like? okay, you know you can score 20 on any given night, right? Mm -hmm. To, like, being a ball mover and playing that style, too. Uh, just feel the game. You know, mm -hmm. you see how the defense is guarding you at first. Right. Because this game, I, I had, like, four or five assists, and it kept them honest. So, you know, when the defense is honest with me passing the ball, then it's much easier for me to score. Right. That's going to open up opportunities yeah, for you. opportunities for me, so. You know. And you'll have NBA talent around you at the next level, yeah, right? Yeah, right. So it'll definitely be even easier for me then because – got NBA players, established pros, making shots, so yep. even even better. Spacing, all Spacing, that. Spacing, everything. Yeah, it's a different sport almost. <laughs> yeah, almost. A whole different game. <laughs> yep, no question. And right. so here's another good read from you, too. Okay, late clock, right? Late game. Um, game on the line. I think I was at this. Mm -hmm. uh, w what do you see here? Uh, right here, it, it was it was going to be like a little ISO, but Herb Jones right here, he like had his back turned to Trendon and wanted to help out on the drive, and Trendon did an amazing cut, and I just found him on, on the cut, so... It was really just an ISO, but he but he helped, and Trendon made an amazing play and got an and one. Yeah, perfect. And, and, and so um, isolation, late clock, just like you said, and I, I think this is what happens when you're as explosive a scorer as you are, right? All yeah. eyes on you. Yeah, definitely. And that's the defensive player of the year too, right? Yeah, he he was just sitting there waiting for me to drive, try to knock it on my hand, but Trendon made a hell of a play, so it was, it was great. Yeah, great read. And so, all right, that's some of you playing with the ball as an isolation score mm -hmm. and then decision-making out of that. Um, but right away, it might be, you know, you might be playing next to Steph or, you know, a Dame or somebody like that who's really good with the ball, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think your ability to shoot off the catch, too, is, is a major value add. Yeah. Um, what, what do you see on this possession? And, and when you're shooting the ball well off the catch, what are some of the things you're doing mechanically? Yeah, right here, um, Javante Smart made a great driving kick to me. Mm -hmm. um, John Petty just sunk in because I guess LeBlanc was wide open, Josh LeBlanc was wide open, so mm -hmm. he sunk in and it left me wide open for a catch and shoot three. And then on the hop, great balance, great rhythm. Um, so, I mean, I think people would look at, okay, 32% from three and think like maybe streaky or something like that, but I mean, you made some tough, tough shots. Why do you think that it's 32, not 40? Because uh, I, I took a lot of off the dribble contested threes this uh -huh. year. I took a lot of off the dribble contested threes, so... I feel like that's that's one of the main reasons why I was 32. Yeah. I feel like my, you know, catch and shoot threes this year was pretty great. I think it was at like 39, 40% from yep. catch and shoot threes. So I feel like just just the situation I was in, you mm -hmm. know, you know, we had a lot of ISOs from threes. So yeah. I feel like it was just a situation I was in that it was a 32%. And if you look at, what, 90 from the line almost, yeah, right? Yeah, 90 from the line, so... Yeah, I don't yeah. think you can question um, your shooting touch. And then even in the, in the league, too, you'll see guys... I know I don't know if this is actually um, intentional, but you'll see guards even screening, right, and kind of pop into space um, on the hop again, deep three, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think you know they might use you like that as well, you know, being a floor spacer um, in that sense, and then you know setting screens, popping, and then if they run you off, what do you got here? Yeah, like right here, it was just a fast break right here. Everybody wasn't matched up in a big. Just so happened to be matched up on me. And plus, everybody thinks I'm going to shoot, so the pump fake just got really out, really out of position. And I just stepped to the side, wide open three. Was it, because um, I know it's been a challenge for some guys to, like, usually up fake, dribble in for a mid-range. Now it's, like, so much more side steps. Side step, Is yeah. that, have you always had that, or that's something you have to do? Yeah, I mean, I always had that. I mean, I pretty much had every shot that you see on here. I yeah. work on every single shot, so, you know. And plus, right here, I just wanted to shoot a three, because I feel like it was the best option. Yeah, no, it's great. Like we talked about, your balance, your footwork, creating space, left, right, um, all that. I mean, that's big time. And so what about, like like we talked about earlier, right? So playing off the catch is huge. Um, but you'll see, 
you know, uh, like the Spurs or the Warriors, they'll preach like point five, right? Like, like quick decision. Um, and I know a lot of coaches are preaching that now too. Um, how, how have you, what's the adjustment going to be in that regard at the next level? Because you were such a like, you're the primary scorer, right? At LSU, you're, you're the most prolific scorer really in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you kind of now find that rhythm of like, okay, making the quick decisions while also being a threat? Oh, easy. Um, it's just, as I said, just the system, you know, yep. with, with this system, I could, I could hold the ball. Right. You know, I could hold the ball and just make, make any decision I wanted. So really in the NBA, I, I can adjust just fine with point five or whatever team that is. So really just the system, really, whatever system I'm in, I, I can adapt to it. Is that stuff that you've been working on yourself, like like making those kind of quick reads and playing out of those quick actions? Yeah, def- yeah, definitely. Just training with Noel LaRose. He's, yep. really been, he's really been preaching that, you know, give it up, relocate, 0.5, quick decisions, quick decisions, quick decisions. So really just training with Noel LaRose has really helped me out with, you know, quick, quick decisions. So yeah. it's been great. Yeah, he's one of the best in the business. Yeah, um, uh, kind of installing that mentality yeah. in you and putting it in game-like situations. Yeah, definitely. And I think this is a great example of that, like being decisive, getting downhill, and then hit the roof on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Take me through this. Yeah, you know, um, shot clock was running down. We had like five seconds left, so you had to make a quick decision. Yep. And right here, it was just everybody swarmed to the ball, so I feel like I had to shoot it high in the air with a floater because that was a seven-footer, number 45. So I had to shoot up over him, and it went in. <laughs> Yeah, and you've got the floater too. I, I think we saw some two foot, some right foot. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always been a part of your game. Yeah, definitely. I, um, my mom always says, you know, the floater is my best shot. So yeah, really, yeah. So really, I really just had the floater. Nobody really taught me the floater. I really just did it on my own. So I really just learned it on my own. So I feel like the floater is a great shot to have when you're in the next level. Yeah, huge because you're gonna have Gobert and be yeah, Giannis. Gotta have a floater. Yeah. Hard, so, yeah, all waiting for you, right? Yeah. Um, all right, so that we've seen some of the ISO stuff. We've seen. You know, playing off of spot ups and, and things like that. Um, now I think like pin downs, handoffs, all that too is where you can be really effective. Um, wh- what are you seeing in the defense here that allows you to make this read? Yeah, um, Tennessee was trying to play off the switch. They was playing the switch, so you know it was kind of a miscommunication. So I knew it was going to be a, a three pointer as soon as I touched. It. Yeah, and in the NBA, I think they're going to learn quickly. Like you can't miscommunicate the switch against you or you can't gap that, right? Right, because it's just going to be, you know, you're at my mercy at that point. Because right here, he, because um, Josiah James and Jaden Springer were, you know, miscommun- miscommunication with the switch. Yep. So it was just a wide open three for me. So what if he does, like, stay attached to your hip, right? Oh, and he gonna, rides over, then what do you do? I'm just going to drive downhill. And if Vescovi helps up, I'm just going to dump it down to Darius Days. Or if Keon stays right there, I'm going to just kick it out to Andre Hyatt again for another corner three. So you really just at my mercy if you're on my hip and behind me because nothing you can really do. Right. Or if anything, I could just draw a foul on him because he's on my hip, on my back. So it's pretty much at my mercy and the defense at my mercy at this point. So then it's almost like a pick and roll situation, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a pick and roll and, you know, I have, I have options, a lot of options. And that's kind of what we see here, right? So, okay, handoff situation, going to come into it. And then now you come off tight, so he chases over. Mm-hmm. What are you looking at here? Yeah, right here. I knew I knew that I could get in the lane right here because it was open, but I, I needed to change the I needed to change the pace right here. Mm-hmm. I really just hesitated, you know, a little hesitate, like I was gonna pass it back to Days, and he went for it, and I just did a nice little euro step in the middle and layup. And the more that you make that lefty kind of throwback, right, mm-hmm. the more that he's got to worry about that, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Because you know, because Days can shoot, so he's worried about Darius Days shooting the ball. So it really just, you know, personnel and space and really. Yeah, perfect. That, uh, that's a great read right there. No question about it. And then so, all right, pick and roll a little bit, right? Um, how much, I guess, how much pick and roll did you play at LSU and how much do you think you'll play at the next level? I feel like I played a good amount of pick and roll at LSU, mm-hmm. um, but definitely the next level is going to be more because that's what the NBA is now, pick and roll yep. to ISOs, you know, so I feel like I play a lot more pick and roll in the NBA though. So what do you see here? Any any different reads you would make? So there, this is kind of like a weak hedge, huh? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So you're going to come off. Um, what are your options as you kind of turn the corner? I could have just kicked it out to Andre, mm-hmm. or I could have just shot a pull up. But you know, he got John Petty had great hands right here. But I think the best option would be for me to kick out to Andre right here. He was shot the three. Yeah, exactly. And then as as you get you know NBA spacing and guys around you, right? That might be hard roller, Clint Capella. Mm-hmm. You know, lefty pocket pass. And then if the weak side helps, then you got the skip too, right? Yeah. Um, it's huge in in you know development and and even things like this too, right? So. Um, you know, do, do you feel like you had the pitch back here? Or I know you get a switch eventually. Yeah, definitely. But um, our our offense was if you get the switch on a big attack, I'm so, go at him. 
Yeah, so really just our system, but I definitely had to pass back the days, but it was just our system. If you get the switch on a big, go at them. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, Coach Wade and everybody likes likes that matchup, right? Yeah, yeah. So what about this? Yeah, um, you know, pick and roll, and our offense was if, you, if you're if you driving to, like, his side on the pick and roll, then, the, you know, the... Um, slot cut? The slot cut, cuts to the hoop. Mm -hmm. And Trenton made a great cut, and I made a great pass, and he just didn't finish. Yeah, great read, and then and then puts it back. You, no love on the assist for that, though, huh? I know, right? <laughs> uh, it happens, but great cut, great finish. I'm glad we got the points. And so I'm curious, like, what are your options in this situation? All right, so you get him to run into the screen, and here it's like your world, right? Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking at as you come off, and what are some of your options? I'm really looking at the defense, like the help defense, because uh -huh. I, I know I can beat him, but I, I probably should have probably should have kept driving hard at him left. But it was just, you know, feeling. Well, no, you get you end up getting the switch, right? Yeah. Drag him out, and I think you had a deep one, right? Yeah, pull up three right here. Another one. Um, but just to show, like, you, you got so many options in these side ball screens, right? You can yeah. snake it back. You can get downhill, in and out, um, everything. And that I think this is kind of what NBA spacing is going to look like, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and then I think the last part of it, the last piece of the puzzle is um, playing out of, like, pin down, staggers, all that stuff. I think you can be a threat there, too. Um, what do you see here? Yeah, um, great screen by Darius Days. Uh, yep. The defender went under, so I knew it was just an easy fade back. Mm -hmm. It was a wide open catch and shoot three. You know, practice shot. Yeah, that's a layup, right? Yeah, definitely. So if he's going to gap it like that, then you just kind of pop back? Yeah, al yeah, always a pop back. And plus, it just, you know, Days and me had a nice connection. But if he goes if he goes under like that, just pop, you know, screen him in, and I'll just pop out. So it was a wide open three for me. Yeah, perfect. Great, great defense there. Um, and then here against Texas A&M, you know, coming off tight. And then what, what's your read here? So they run you off? Yeah, ran me off. And plus this game, I was I was feeling this. So that was kind of like a heat check shot. Yeah. So it was just a nice little step back. And I just, just you know, had it going that game. So Yeah, no, that's, I mean, you're a threat from three, right? So they got to stay attached. They want to get you off the spot. Yeah, yeah. And then you're just playing off instincts from there, right? Yeah, definitely. Step back, mid-range. So you can do it right, doing left. Right, left. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, and then here against Alabama, just kind of curling this too, right? What, what do you see in the defense here? Well, first, the, your ability to create space. How important is this, like the, the setup here? Oh, definitely. Um, you want to change. You want to change your speed, like change your change your pace. Uh huh. So like the defense can't really like keen in on you. Yeah. So I really just went in slow, and then I came off real fast, and he was on my hip, and it was just an easy, you know, drive to the hoop layup. And then if the big helps up, you just got a little drop off too, right? A little drop off, yeah. Yeah, you'll see even like Brad Beal, even like JJ Redick in his prime, like he'll start running and then just stop. Yeah, yeah. So keeps defense honest. Yeah, yeah. Defense honest with that. So I try to take some stuff like that from them. Yeah, all the all the tricks, right? Yeah, all the tricks. So what, all right, what about defensively? How how tough is it to like you're the you're the primary guy, right? You're you're the one scoring the majority of the points, and then to go back and like play on the defensive end as well. Do do you feel like maybe you're underrated in terms of like what you can be at the next level defensively? Oh, without a doubt, uh, I feel like I'm very underrated as far as on the ball. Yeah. Plus, plus with our defense at LSU, we switch everything. So right. You're on a guard and you're gonna switch onto a five. So I right. feel like you can't really show what you are defensively in our defensive scheme because right. we, we switched everything. So. Yeah. You know, plus I mean, the, I mean the league does that, but still, you know, but on ball I feel like I'm really, I'm a really good defender. Yeah, you're strong. You have good feet, like we showed. You know, offensively, I think that's going to translate. Uh, so what about possessions like this? Like, like what do you? I know what you guys switch initially, right? Yeah, we switch initially. Um, I try to, I try to take care of the drive, but he was just an easy pitch out three. So if that's going to be Steph, Dame, someone like that at the next level, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just gonna be up on him. And plus Stay here, attached, right? Yeah, and plus, here, our, our sky report was he streaky three point shooter, and he didn't really shoot a lot of threes against us. So Quinterly. Yeah, so we just wanted to um, see if he could make one. He made it. He yeah, made more of a downhill it. driver, right? Yeah, downhill driver. Quick, active. Um, and then what about this? I mean, this just shows I think the the recovery you know that that you can make on the defensive end of the floor. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see here? So good cut from him, but then you recover. What do you, what do you got? Yeah, right here. Plus, I, I kind of seen him cut him, but I didn't think he was going to pass it to him. But as soon as he passed it to him, I just timed it perfectly and got the block. Yeah. A um, little bit of the bounce there, huh? Yeah, a little bit of bounce. Yeah, got to have it. Um, what about this one here? So, what what's the scouting report on our guy here? What is that, um, Miles? Doesn't play a ton, right? No, nah, lefty. Um, lefty, so forcing right, and he just had a nice layup. 
pretty much lazy after I drifted to losing. Yeah, late, late um, second half, right? Yeah. Um, but I think at the next level, you know, you're going to have the footwork to to be able to slide with those guys and, and have an impact. Were you were you a no middle team or, or, or what do you what were you guys trying to do in the side? Uh, like playing like playing to their strong hand. Not, okay. Not, yeah, like playing on their strong hand. But right here, he got to he got to a strong hand anyway. But I made a great recovery on the play. Yeah. To contest it. Yep, and not giving up, right? And, right? and playing with that type of tenacity and, and making a play, you know, uh, on the ball, in the paint. Um, I think that's going to be huge. And then I think you were at your best when you were, like, active like this, you know, like moving your feet, hands, showing him different different looks, right? Yeah, right. And I know you kind of jump here, but then you, you get it back with the swipe. Um, what, what's your goal in this situation? Yeah, I, I was just trying to be, like, a little active right here. But mm -hmm. as soon as he drove past, I knew he'll, he'll bring the ball down. And as soon as he brought the ball down, I just, you know, just knock the ball away. And plus, I'm really good at, like, knocking the ball away on steals like that. So I try to pick my spots like that. Yeah, perfect. And sometimes, you know, you can cover up a uh, biting on an up fake or something like that just with energy and effort, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then, okay, yeah. you talked about the switching and the value of, like, teams maybe you had to battle a big or, or you're dealing with guys posting up. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what do you see on this play and, and what's your goal? Yeah, I just wanted to, like, make the catch a little hard. Uh-huh. You know, like, try to make the catch a little hard and, like, force him to a tough shot, which I did right here. Great contest right there. So it was just a... You know, just effort, really. Just want to force them to a tough shot and we can rebound. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I guess, lastly, you know, there are players all over, right, who, who want to make it. Um, maybe not those who have scored as much as you in, yeah, in, in right. college, but, you know, guys all over who some have a similar profile to you, mm -hmm. some are, you know, better athletes, all that. Um, why is it that NBA teams should should bet on Cam Thomas being somebody who, you know, kind of surprises in his, in his like, we look at Devin Booker, right? We're like, man, why? How did he go 13? Right. Why, why are you going to be somebody who we look back in a few years and say, man, like, why did he go where he did? He's one of the best players to come out of this draft. Yeah, you know, just instant impact. Yeah. Uh, my instant impact on every team I've been on, Oak Hill, LSU, and hopefully in the NBA. So really just instant impact, being a winner, winning mentality, and of course, you know, skills, scoring the ball, yeah. skills, and just being a basketball player. So really just those three things is why you should take Cameron Thomas in the, in the NBA draft this year. Yeah, no question. You're kind of fit the, the NBA mold now. It's deep threes, pull up threes, yeah, definitely. quick actions, all that. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, it's been cool to watch your development this appreciate past it. year, and um, best of luck throughout the process. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN.